Thank you. And my, I am Robin Harwani. I'm the principal for the Worldwide Telecom uh, segment within the AWS Partner Network. And I've been leading the uh, work that we have been doing within our, within our partner team for edge computing and 5G uh, over the years. So for us, 5G and edge computing has been a journey. Over the last four years, we started in 2017 when we started with edge networks uh, in, in reInvent. It was really this forum where we all started and had a, a private network that allowed us to integrate to green grass for industrial use cases. And in the next year, our customers asked us to, to create machine learning models at the edge because they were trying to identify and understand how they could use those models uh, and we came back with the CVRS network where we trained hundreds of people uh, that, that could use the network even before private networks with CVRS was GA in, in 2019. And in the very same year, our customers asked us for running network functions to extend the AWS cloud to the edge and have network functions and applications that they could run in industrial environments and we announced AWS Outposts that extended the AWS cloud to the edge uh, as well. And last year was very exciting when we launched Wavelength uh, and we, we looked at various use cases for Outposts as well. Wavelength, as you guys know, is the extension of AWS to the edge of the 5G network. We have launched this service with Verizon, SKT, Vodafone, and, and uh, KDDI. And this year, we have some more exciting use cases for you. And we're also going to talk about the concept of micro networks, which allow for you to interoperate with, uh, between multiple private networks and the concept of interoperating with uh, uh, nationwide 5G networks. In addition to that, we have a very uh, critical business use case. We're going to talk about robotics and machine learning uh, along with it. Uh, so that's kind of going to be our journey this, this year. Industry 4.0 is, is, is something that we all are very used to. We have, we have talked about this last year as well, but as a very quick recap, I'm gonna share with you what, we, what are the industrial customers telling us. When we look at manufacturing customers, our mining customers, oil and gas customers, and ag tech customers, all of them are giving us feedback that it is extremely important for them to take these networks that they are setting up in the remote areas and have the ability to transform their business processes and have the ability to impact the way they conduct business and the efficiency in the product they produce. That has been a key theme along the way. In addition to that, they always have been telling us that, you know, the trend has completely changed where they're going from mass production into mass customization. They're going from a buying cycle and, and massive capital infusions that they had to do historically into leasing in industrial solutions and pay-as-you-go models. And as well as that, they're not just looking at different layers of, of technology from connectivity to applications to processes to machine learning and machine robotics. They are looking at automation that brings these ecosystems and, and tools together for them to start focusing on the business problem. And every time that I've had conversations with large warehouses, industrial sites and locations such as refineries, they are looking to improve the workers, uh, worker safety. They're looking at improving the quality of, of their produce and improving the speed at which they produce uh, their product. So if we look at the application use cases in, the, in industrial that have been powered by edge, there have been use cases like predictive maintenance, predictive quality, and asset condition monitoring that have been there for, for a while. And in addition to that, we have seen machine-to-machine -machine use cases that we have been working on with many of our customers. And these require multiple edge services from AWS based on the customer requirements that we have seen. There are customers like uh, Rio Tinto that have been using AWS Greengrass for mining uh, for, for many, many years. There are customers uh, that have been using applications within smart factories, along, which are powered by AWS Outposts. And we have launched many, many customers uh, that have been using wavelengths uh, at their industrial ports and, and at locations where connectivity is, is available through 5G, where, where they can uh, leverage 
uh, low latency applications that they deploy at the edge of the 5G network to get a 10, 10 or a single digit millisecond latency uh, experience. And if we look at, about, at this journey and how we have powered uh, the, this experience, we started from the very beginning working with our customers. Uh, AWS IoT, which we launched in 2017 in June, that allowed many of our customers to bring AWS IoT to the edge. At the same time, we had other services like FreeRTOS uh, that allowed for machine control that could happen remotely uh, using a real-time operating system that would burn, uh, it would be burned into the chipset of, of a machine, for example. And we complement that with, with services that we offer at the edge with like so site-wise that allow for monitoring and management of these networks. In addition to that, we launched services in 2017, 2016, 2017 for disconnected operations. Snow Family is a great example of that. Snowball Edge allows you to run completely disconnected mode for tactical IoT as well as healthcare IoT use cases in many, many industrial locations. If you look at this, and, and as we got more and more feedback, we have launched outposts for extending the 5G networks to the edge with the operators, as well as for private networks with, with many, many of our industrial customers and Wavelength, which allows our 5G networks to be extended to the edge. So that has been our journey, if you look at this slide. Uh, but what is critical is always to understand which tool to use for which job. And as we talk to our customers, our customers ask for architectural best practices as to how to build solutions for specific problem statements. And today I will share with you how you can go about uh, taking these uh, different tools and apply them to specific problem sets and con transform a business process. And this is, is another representation of our edge to cloud architecture. If you, the slide that you're looking at, the, uh, there, are, there are services uh, you know, with different characteristics. If you look at Snowball and Snowball Edge, this is a ruggedized environment. You can use it in an indoor and outdoor uh, setting uh, from zero to 45 degrees centigrade. There is no problems. You can even take it in sub-zero. And, and, and you know, you know, if you've all seen the, the video from Bill Vass where he's putting it in an oven, so uh, that's, that's uh, the Snow family of devices. When you look at the on-premises cloud extension platforms like Outpost, that allows you to take many, many AWS services and extend that to the edge of the network. This is things that we have used for many years, things like EC2, EBS, VPCs, uh, uh, things like uh, having the same guardrail experience from orchestration and management perspective, the same cloud formation templates. All of this allows us to, to extend AWS to the edge of the network. And the same thing goes for Wavelength. Wavelength takes the same concept all the way to the 5G edge in, in Verizon networks. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Jurain, and he's gonna walk us through the, the use case that we have been working together for last, for last year on, on robotics and how edge computing plays an important role along with mobility for uh, ghost robotics. Jurain, do you wanna take it away? Thanks, Robin, appreciate it. So, uh, you know, we've seen the videos of legged robots, they're very sexy, but ultimately we think about these mobile platforms differently. And uh, in our case, they're really IoT devices, right? We're th giving the customer the capability of adding any type of sensor, any type of communications uh, a platform and bringing it into the field. And so when we think about a mobile robot, we think about high availability, all terrain and a very open architecture so you can plug it into any type of enterprise service or application. Uh, today, we're focused on building legged uh, systems for military, homeland security, and intel applications, and now we're quickly moving into enterprise. And we're seeing a lot of opportunity and a lot of interest in construction, mining, extraction, natural resources, industries that you would typically see systems outdoors where you have to collect quite a bit of data, there are communications issues, and, and many times you're in remote locations. And what our mobile IoT platforms do in the end is really inspect manage assets, or really secure uh, facilities or locations. Uh, the challenges for today really are continuous coverage in remote and uh, dangerous locations. The legged robot, uh, the, the platform that we built, is, is really built for these types of environments. It's an IP67 robot that can work in any type of environmental condition. 
we're obviously very interested in making sure that we keep workers out of harm's way. Uh, there are so many jobs out there that are dull and dependent on humans that, frankly, it's a lot safer and, from a management perspective, a lot easier to justify collecting data uh, with a robotic platform. And really, we're running into a lot of challenges with our, with our large uh, enterprise customers where they lack the human resources or even the expertise uh, to deploy uh, folks into the field to do these data collection jobs. And ultimately, we're talking about huge amounts of data, the data density and the persistent communication requirements for getting that data off of a sensor uh, is it requires a really robust platform and something that's not there today. And so uh, this video here shows an example of our robots in a variety of applications in different environments. Uh, these videos are from the past year uh, with a variety of customers. We have over uh, uh, 20 uh, pilot deployments today uh, doing sensing, communications, and small payload applications. We have all sorts of sensors here. Uh, you'll see a very large uh, blue uh, sensor on, our, on top of our robot. That's a time of flight sensor that's used uh, in mining, extraction, survey uh, uh, markets. It's made by Carlson Laser. We have thermal sensors on all these robots from companies like FLIR. Some of the sensors that we're deploying here on these robots are from companies like Metron that make a chem and bio uh, 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 platforms for sensing. Now, you also see a robot blowing up a, a garbage can. That's an actual disruptor that's used by uh, EOD and bomb squad tech uh, teams uh, uh, when they're working in dangerous environments. You'll also see uh, our robot in some industrial settings, uh, including a plant from Georgia Pacific, where we've got our pilot robots going in very shortly. And then, of course, you see our robots coming off tanks. And I hate to say it, our, our folks beat these robots up in the basement. And it's not that we hate robot dogs, uh, but we're testing them. We want to make them all terrain, very rugged, unstoppable. And this robot you see here is very, very unique. You know, it's IP68. Uh, it'll literally uh, uh, work underwater. Uh, it's made for very durable environments. And so we're working with these types of customers that need these types of, of mobile uh, computing platforms. Very exciting, Jurain. And, and when, when I started interacting with Jurain, uh, and we were talking about connectivity and the role of connectivity, and he completely transformed my thinking uh, in our first meeting when we were talking about it. I remember uh, talking to him about 5G networks and wavelength and, and a whole bunch of services. And he said, Robin, some of my robots land in position locations where there is no connectivity. Forget 5G, 4G, there is no Gs there. And there are requirements at times where these robots need to interact with each other, meaning two different private networks interacting with each other and interact with different devices that are on a human uh, to interact with them. And in some cases, uh, uh, you know, uh, they need to interoperate with legacy equipment. So it's not just connectivity and security and legacy equipment that they have to interact with, along with many, many devices, but they also need to have a very reliable connectivity because you're, as he said, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, a machine process working or not working. This is uh, a very important uh, area of, of uh, robotics. This is uh, about human safety and, and worker safety in industrial environments as well, along with uh, the performance requirements in terms of low latency. So uh, the problem statement after talking to Jurain completely changed and, and we started looking at uh, different types of, of requirements from him in terms of micro networks. He, he uh, asked us to look at it. And when we when we tried to, to run it by him and said, uh, Jorain, a private network requires a lot of capability. We need to have at times uh, uh, a, a, a full network with a core uh, uh, on it. We need a cell tower, which, which requires uh, connectivity to be set up. We need to leverage 5G Edge or a, some sort of an Edge service that runs the application on top in, in addition to the network that's running. He already showed those sensors. They are taking images. There is, there is cameras that are taking images and, and that those images need to be processed locally. And then there has to be an identification of there is the human factor risk analysis and then communication back to the device that a human is carrying. In addition to that, there are use cases of the robot, which is the health of the robot, the controller of the robot, uh, the, the, and having a digital twin management capability that we talked about. So uh, it, was, it, was good, it was kind of eye-opening to, to look at this use case and kind of see 
how we had to 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 solve this problem and so now let's go back to our slide that we looked at uh, for this specific use case if you look at all the edge services that we have uh, and this is an exercise that i want everybody in the audience to look at and reflect as they are looking at problem statements to say what use cases require which services from aws at the edge uh, and there is in this case we would definitely uh, because connectivity is limited in industrial environments, in remote environments, in war fields and others, uh, there is really no uh, I have no chance to have wavelength for, for a starting point because 5G is, is uh, being rolled out in limited markets, in limited areas, but then there are areas where which are not covered. How do you make sure that you have edge compute and low latency networks there? So that did not work out. Then Outpost is, is an extension to the uh, AWS cloud, but that requires connectivity back to the cloud. And uh, it is uh, a form factor where you are needing lots and lots of services at the edge. What Jurain really needed was ability to, to extend AWS IoT at the edge and run a, a low latency disconnected network, which was in a very, very ruggedized environment, both indoors and outdoors. So that's where we, we zeroed in on Snow family of devices. Now, the next thing was to work with Drain to find out and his team to find out which form factor in the Snow family would really work uh, for, for his, his platform. And early on in, in the discovery phase, we found out that uh, Ghost has built an amazing platform that integrates uh, through open APIs into, into our uh, services. And at the, at, the, at the same time, it also allows for AWS IoT to be extended to to the edge, and uh, uh, it would it would just uh, take the load of a uh, snow cone, which is a two two point one kg uh, edge computing platform, along with the ability to uh, have a powered up and and uh, uh, have a radio uh, set up as well. So so that was kind of how we we kind of went through the entire discovery process and selecting the right service for the right use case. Uh, and uh, th that is, is how we zeroed in uh, into, into this. And the first, very first setup that we uh, had to, to pull together was looked something like this. Uh, we have the, the VPC in the region. Uh, that VPC could ha have a spectrum access system uh, from one of our partners or a, an operator network uh, could, be, could be used with their own spectrum. Uh, in this case, we were demonstrating this in a uh, environment uh, which was okay to have provisioning and control plane running uh, in the cloud and uh, uh, the user plane of the mobile core running on the edge on a snow device. And uh, uh, we tested that as a very first step. We, we connected that to a radio. The radio itself was mounted and secured on top of a robot. Uh, if for an indoor environment, we were able to use uh, our, our partner Comscope's radio and, and a partner Ethernet's uh, core network and then integrate all of this together very, very quickly and, and uh, test this out. Once we got this initial test done, we also tested scenarios like having the full control plane and the user plane on the, uh, on the snow device uh, with four vCPUs and, and test out a 100 Mbps network. Now 100 Mbps network that allows for uh, uh, 20,000 square, uh, square feet of coverage was initially the starting point that we were looking at in terms of uh, coverage area. And then we ex extended it as we needed to. What very quickly we realized was it was incredibly simple to set this up. If you have an open environment and defined APIs that you can integrate into, and the value that you can bring is many, many applications. We were able to test out the sensor uh, health uh, and heat, uh, the heat se uh, sensors, te temperature sensors, vibration sensors, and the health of the entire robot, as well as look at characteristics of communication to somebody that is behind the robot, uh, as Yurin was explaining in, in a war terrain. And the third kind of use case now, once we were done with the disconnected mode, we also talked about urban use cases. If we are in an environment where there is 5G coverage, we want this same robot to have many, many applications that can be uh, tested from a wavelength zone. So from the, the same network, we connected over to a wavelength zone and we were able to test out video analytics applications for 
physical distancing, we were able to uh, test out controller of the robot that could could be uh, doing a 10 millisecond round trip uh, control plane uh, for the robot uh, platform itself. And those were the kind of things that we were looking to to test out early on uh, when we started. Uh, and, and and with the virtue of having these micro networks on top of a robot, then integrating those uh, uh, those networks over to uh, with dual sim or or you know roaming interfaces to Wavelength to the larger national networks, it turned out to be an incredibly valuable asset to have uh, for 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 us. Uh, and and I think that. Jurain, I will. I will also let you comment here. I think it's incredibly important, like you had explained before, the role of edge compute. What did that do for the the capability that that we had for the the robot? And what are the incremental features that the customers benefit from? If you want to give a couple of examples. Yeah, I, you take this idea of sensing, right? Sensing on the edge, mobile sensing platforms. Um, let's say you're an energy company. Let's say you're a military customer and you're, you're doing I, ISR recon. Uh, no different uh, than inspection that a enterprise customer would do. The amount of data that's being collected is, is enormous. And some of that processing that can be done there in a hybrid environment creates some complexity. And ultimately that complexity is that bottleneck in terms of communications. And so uh, the robot is also moving, right? It's an environment where it has to be controlled. There's gotta be a telemetry feed. And so there's a lot of uh, challenges around security, provisioning of these devices, pulling one device off, having multiple devices in. Some devices are charging uh, uh, and other devices are running and then uh, in tandem they're swapping. There's a lot of complexity with the robot control uh, and the robot telemetry, making sure that these robots are, are working and they're safe. And so that's one of the big challenges that we have in integrating that type of edge processing platform with a communications architecture that's right on the robot you know, it makes our life or our customers' life a lot easier monitoring and managing these fleets of, of devices. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the easy one is bandwidth, right? There's huge amounts of data here. The data density is, is very large. And the challenge is, how do you deal with it? And ultimately, the bottlenecks are uh, either you process and store that data on the device or you move it quickly up to the cloud. And there's a cost value proposition uh, uh, a validation assessment that you have to make on how you do that. Thank you, Jurian. That was fantastic. Many thank you for for explaining the the how this technology uh, in real life kind of helps our customers as well. It's incredibly important, uh, not just to look at this from a technology perspective, selection of edge, right edge services for the right use cases, but also kind of how this translates into value for our for for the customers. Thank you. As we look at the outcomes, right, and uh, there were there were a few things for for us that were very very important when we started. The first thing, uh, having the connectivity in a uh, in in disconnected areas, having low latency networks, uh, integration in connected areas with wavelength, and then uh, you know we did not talk about this. We also use AWS RoboMaker for the civil simulation. So let me just share how. Uh, this the experience came to life, right? If you look at this robot, uh, it has a snow cone built mounted on top of it. It allows for an entire mobile core to run on on it. It's powered up. It's connected to a radio that is transmitting uh, uh, signals across uh, a fifteen to twenty thousand square feet uh, area. You can easily extend that by selecting a different radios category, and it you can see that. Uh, it is allowing for uh, applications that, that can be uh, run uh, in a disconnected mode to be implemented on the edge of the platform. And Jorin, do you want to also share the, the, the experience in terms of the time it took for us to build this out and the capability itself? Yeah, when, when we got the call earlier this year to cooperate and then we finally pulled the trigger, uh, it was very fast. And uh, I think it was uh, just a few days that our team put this together. Uh, and we had the robot out running. We we had to. Uh, it would took longer to find a day when it was raining to get that robot out there for some cool shots. Uh, but uh, you know, I think we were able to show it in an urban environment, also you know near a, a railroad uh, track, uh, construction site. I think hopefully it gives customers the idea, uh, ideas on how to deploy this platform uh, with these computing services and technology from AWS and getting into the field for their applications.
Thank you. Thank you, Jureen. I think it, it really transforms the experience. And it was amazing partnering with your team. Your team has been amazing to work with. Uh, I, think, I think this gives our, our users an example of how we have, uh, you know, looked and worked with uh, Jureen's team, Ghost Robotics team, and, and transformed a, a use case uh, by selecting the right service. Uh, the key takeaway is that, that I want to leave you guys with is Understanding the available AWS Edge services, there is a lots and lots of capabilities, starting from Greengrass, which uh, extends the AWS IoT to the Edge, Outposts that extend entire AWS Cloud to the Edge, Fi uh, Wavelength, which extends AWS uh, Edge to the 5G network, Snow devices for disconnected networks, micro networks that we talked about, and then uh, our CDN Edge locations where you can run Lambda functions. There's, to understand the business problem, start from the customer, start with the right right services that you need to use. And in this case, we, we realized that AGVs and, and four-legged robots with, with sensors have been talked about for a long time, but how you can take them, add value of connectivity and applications on top and completely transform a customer's experience that they can get. And finally, I think all our customers, uh, you know, within ag tech, within mining, within refineries, construction zones, government customers uh, that can benefit from this technology, we invite you to come work with us as we transform the industrial uh, processes and improve the outcomes that you have asked us to, to look at. Uh, with that, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you all of you and interacting with you. Thank you, Jareen. It was really a pleasure working with you.